Hey guys, welcome back to video 6 of the Nancy Drew Waverly Academy story. We last found out that Rachel has a twin sister named Kim and that Corrine did an essay on Edgar Allan Poe that won the Pen and Paper Award. Good for her! We found out that Poe had a story that he possibly written but never published and that it went missing one day so we don't know what happened to it. Corrine, you here? Guess not. That's a first. Um, you know what, let's, let's take a minute to look at this. This is not the best place to make a call. It's my own room and it's empty. Whatever. Ned! I want to talk to hey, Nancy. Ned. So, do you know who done it yet? Well, I have an idea who the culprit is. Great, let's hear it. I think it's the student body president, Izzy. She's not very book smart, but she's incredibly people smart. And since this black cat stuff is basically psychological warfare, something she's an expert at, I'm pretty sure she's using it to mitigate the competition when it comes to being valedictorian. What about the accidents? You think she's smart enough to pull them off? Whatever she lacks in brains, she more than makes up for in motivation. And since hurting people doesn't seem to bother her at all, yes, I think she is. Then you're almost there. Now all you have to do is prove it. You're not going to believe this, but Rachel is actually two people. What do you mean she's two people? I mean she has a twin named Kim, and they're both here at Waverly attending classes as Rachel. They're pretending to be one person? Yes. They've been sharing the scholarship Rachel got since day one, and no one here is the wiser. Wow, I'm impressed. They're also responsible for the black cat notes. They're the black cat? Not technically. Apparently the real black cat is forcing them to do her dirty work for her. You mean they're being blackmailed? Somehow the black cat discovered their secret. So now, if they don't comply, bust it. I don't know, Nance. These twins are obviously good at fooling people. They could be playing you. And now that they know that you know their secret, their work could get a whole lot dirtier. Time to do some more snooping. Stay out of trouble. I'll try, but you know me. Bye. <sighs> well, we're gonna have to, you know, just keep... I'm moving. here. How goes it? I'll quit bugging you. Door's always open. Wait a minute. That's Izzy stuff. Why does Corrine have this? Come on in. Oh. Sorry, my bad. I'm here. Hey, Becca, thanks for uploading that essay. Why did you send me that note? What note? I got a note from the black cat. A second note. I, I didn't send it. We didn't send it. The first one, yes, but that was it. If you got another note, it must be from the real black cat. Look, I don't have any more assignments for you, so thanks for all your help. You're welcome. 
You may not come in. Just leave. Hey, what's going on? I'll check back with you later. Hit him hard. What is that noise? Sounds like it's coming from the other side of the wall. That's interesting. The old set of blueprints shows a tiny room behind the furnace which isn't on the modern blueprints. And the modern blueprint includes a drawing of the furnace and a bunch of numbered valves. Dupin? I've seen that name before in Hollowell's journal. Wait a minute. I wonder. What was it again? I wrote it down. Three is five. Three is five. No. Yeah. Three is fine, five is more. Even 19 defeats four. Should just seven become lore? At least two will find the door. I wonder. I wrote down which numbers were what, so just give me a second. is more even 19 defeats 4 should just 7 should just 7 become 4 at least 2 will find that uh oh uh oh Kareen? What are you doing here? Apparently the same thing you are. Looking for the treasure Rita Hollowell hid. Is that it? What is it? An old manuscript? By Edgar Allan Poe. Never published. He told her where it was when he was on his deathbed. When he died, she took it and ran off so Rufus Griswold wouldn't end up with it. At least I think that's what happened. You found all that out while you were researching that paper? When I do research, I do research. Although, truth be told, all I knew with relative certainty is that she'd hidden something in this building. I wasn't sure where. Which is why you became the Black Cat. I'm not the Black Cat. I didn't leave those notes. No, you blackmailed someone else into doing that for you. Two someones, actually. You're pretty smart. The question is, are you smart enough to live to tell the tale? I don't think so. No, forget it. You're not going anywhere till you tell me what the heck is going on. Come on, Mel. It's too long a story. I need to go. You just entered my room through the wall. I want an explanation. I'll explain later. Now let me past. Stay right <gasps> there, Mel. You too? What is this? Well, for Corrine, it's over. 
Because of all the meticulous research she'd done, Corrine knew Rita Hollowell had hidden something written by Poe somewhere in Ramsey Hall. But without the clues that my investigation eventually uncovered, her only hope of finding it was by searching the entire building. And she couldn't do that unless most, if not all, of its occupants spent midterm break elsewhere, leaving their rooms unoccupied. So, she resurrected an old Waverly legend and attempted to frighten her classmates away with notes from the Black Cat, followed by well-timed accidents. And, having stumbled upon Rachel and Kim's secret months before, she blackmailed them into writing and delivering the notes for her, so that, if anything went wrong, they would take the blame. But thanks to me, and to Mel, who wouldn't even let me out of her room until I told her everything, Corrine got the blame and was promptly expelled, which is kind of too bad. She would no doubt have graduated at the top of her class if her greed, guile, and subconscious desire to retaliate against her classmates hadn't gotten the best of her. But some good did result from all this. For one thing, Megan's parents dropped their threatened lawsuit and allowed her to return to school. Fully recovered from her allergic reaction, she threw herself into her studies with a vengeance. Now, with Corrine out of the picture, the valedictorian contest has turned into an academic knockdown dragout between Izzy, Leela, Mel, and Megan. Which is a good thing. Not pretty, but good. Anyway, as for Rachel and Kim, Corrine made sure they got expelled too. But when some of Waverly's more influential alumni heard what had happened, they insisted the twins be unexpelled and even pay their tuition and board for the rest of the year. They contended that the audacious fraud Rachel and Kim had perpetrated stemmed from their determination to get a good education and hence should be rewarded, not punished. And you know, I have the feeling Rita Hollowell and maybe even her idol Mr. Poe, who was pretty darn good at making fiction seem like fact himself, would have very much agreed. I think it was Izzy. Darn. I don't know about you, but tornadoes have always fascinated me. So when I'm told a team of tornado chasers down in Oklahoma is having strange, sometimes life-threatening problems with its equipment, and I'm asked to join the team so I can try to figure out why, I immediately say yes. But once I arrive in Tornado Alley, I quickly discover that a line of storms severe enough to spawn a record-breaking string of twisters is not my biggest problem. I must also survive the diabolical actions of a teammate bent on sabotage. Join me as I learn firsthand which is more dangerous, Mother Nature or Human Nature, in my next adventure, Trail of the Twister. I would say Human Nature is more dangerous. It would be an interesting story, though, to, to, you know, work out and whatnot. Too bad that this is the only, uh, Nancy Geary game that I have. Ugh. Anyway. <clears throat> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. And I hope you enjoyed this different type of hidden object puzzle game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Bye!